Okay guys, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. The real reason that lumber is so expensive is because of you, the consumer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig into it a little bit and I'm gonna explain to you why that is. You can watch a ton of videos on YouTube telling you that it's the supply, there's not enough trees, the mills can't keep up, blah, 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 blah. They'll just go on and on and on with all kinds of reasons as to why the lumber is so expensive. The true reason is the consumer. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's dig into this. So we're gonna start at the source, the trees. From all the research that I've done, it shows that the southern US has more than enough trees to supply the lumber industry. In fact, it's kind of backwards from what we're seeing in the stores. So the, the mills aren't supplying the lumber that's needed. However, the tree growers are supplying more than enough trees to the mills. So things are kind of reversed. Um, I did a little research on a tree farm called Gully Branch in the southern United States. Gully Branch says that they, 10 years ago, were selling trees on the stump at $25 a ton. And guess what? Today, they're selling for that exact same price. They also say that when they put up a tract of trees for bid, that they would have 10 mills show up to bid on, the, on this tract of timber. Today, they're lucky to have five people show up to bid on this timber. So the mills, are not, they're not interested in the timber. They're interested in producing what they want to produce to put into the stores. And there's a reason for that, supply versus demand. So if they, if they reduce the supply that they're putting in the stores, it looks like that there's a big rush on lumber. Now, I'm not gonna say there's not a big rush on lumber because some of the builders and some of that stuff are doing some things that are causing a little bit of these issues with the lumber also. We all know that a lot of the lumber comes out of Canada and, and it's, a, it's a smaller percentage. It's not a huge percentage, but Canadian lumber does supply portions of the Northern United States with lumber. And Canada has had some new laws imposed um, restricting the amount of trees that they can harvest for timbers. However, they're still harvesting enough trees to, to keep up. Um, there, there are a little restrictions on the amount of trees that they can harvest. And then about 13% of our um, sawn lumber ready to sell is coming from Europe. So in exactly what part of the United States that's going to, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it's not getting spread out. Maybe it's more in central um, United States than, than we know. I'm in Michigan, so I'm not so sure about that. So what really happened in the beginning? So in the very beginning, the pandemic, people found a bunch of time on their hands. They ran out, they bought lumber. Um, they did their DIY projects. The mills were shut down or running at a restricted pace to try and keep their employees safe. And there was a supply demand issue at that point in time. So the mills decided they would raise the price on the lumber so that you wouldn't buy as much and they could catch up. However, that's not what happened. They raised the price on the lumber and the consumer you just kept right on buying it. So they're, they're like, oh, hey, look, they're willing to pay $4 for a two by four. Um, let's, let's jack it up again. So they jacked it up again. And guess what? They still couldn't catch up because you were willing to pay $5 for a two by four. So they jacked it again and again and again and again. And guess what they've discovered? you're willing to pay $7.50 for a two by four. Yep, you stand in line at the big box store and you bitch about the price of lumber, but then you bust out your wallet and you buy it. And they know it, they know you're doing it. They're looking at, the, the big lumber mills are looking at how many permits are being pulled in the US, how many new home starts there are. They're looking at all this stuff. But the, in the end, 
the big lumber mills are burning themselves is what they're doing they're burning themselves and, and here's the reason why they are burning builders so if i bid a house to build three months ago and it, it takes about that long guys to get things rolling because you have to get permits you got to get all the finances in line you have to get everything in line by the time the builder gets his first draw and can break ground it could be three months by then the price of lumber has went way up the builder can't go back and say oh guess what um it's going to cost you more to build your house now he has signed agreement with a number on it this is the price so the builder in some instances is walking away with minimal dollars in his pocket maybe he took a shot and lost some money so what the lumber industry is doing to these builders is going to force them to find a way to build these houses and not have to worry about lumber prices going up and there's ways to do that they could switch over to cbs construction a concrete block unit and provide basically the same house and do it in a stable kind of cost environment and the builders are going to start doing this and and they're going to find other ways to build these houses the diys they're going to just stop buying lumber and what's going to happen is everything's going to kind of shift and when it does it's coming it's going to happen pretty soon when it shifts the lumber companies are going to discover the lumber mills that they're not selling near the lumber that they were and now how do we get these people back well the building companies have kind of already switched over they've hired masons they've done everything they need to do to protect themselves the mills are going to be screwed a little bit and they're doing it to themselves they're taking advantage of you me anyone buying lumber and in the process in the end they're screwing themselves and it, it's not going to be good everything's going to collapse there's going to come a point in time when a home purchaser if you want to build a house right now for a 2,000 square foot single family home, the lumber costs are approximately 22 to $25,000 higher than they were a little over a year ago. Now guys, you're lucky if you buy, if you have a home built and you get into this house, you might have $25,000 equity in this house right off the bat. Well, you can wash that it's gone you just paid twenty five thousand extra for the house because of the price of the timber how much more can the price go up before people say i'm done see that's what it's going to take i'm done uh, it's the same thing at your drive through restaurant you know the, the a price of a burger and some fries is 10 bucks how much more can they raise that before you start making a sandwich at home and putting it in the bag with a little bag of chips and eat your lunch that way sooner or later the balloon is going to pop and it, it doesn't matter what industry it is people are only willing to pay so much for something and then they're done they're just done and you know you've seen it with gasoline the prices go up five six bucks people don't drive as much they don't do as many things as they were doing they can't they can't afford it and then what happens is, is the price of gas comes down because the consumer you control the price of every product out there if you're not willing to buy it then they're charging too much for it or it's a crappy product to begin with but when it comes to lumber it's the same thing until you the consumer has had enough of paying these ridiculous prices for this wood and you quit buying it the prices are going to stay right where they're at it is controlled by you plain and simple that that's there's just no other way to look at it that is plain and simple it is controlled by you the price of wood has gone up so substantially a year and a few months ago you could buy a two by four two by four by eight for a little over two dollars now you're looking at seven dollars and fifty cents for the same piece of wood and and that's spf you know spruce pine fir one of those three it's a soft timber 
Um, all your basic construction timbers or soft timbers or SPFs. And, and it's, it's ridiculous that these prices have gone there. In fact, lumber is so overinflated right now that I think that even some of the, the analysts and the, the markets are concerned about the collapse. It's got, it has to collapse. It's going to collapse. And like I say, when it does, it's not going to be good. People are going to be out, you know, $25,000, $40,000 on their home purchases because now you can build that same house all of a sudden for $30,000 less. It'll be just like the housing crash back in 2006. There's going to be no real difference. The, the people, there'll be people unwilling to pay that extra amount of money and they'll just walk away from the house and the bank will be flooded with houses. The housing market's going to crash. It's all coming to a head and it's basically all being produced by these lumber prices. And like I say, there's no shortage of anything. There's no shortage of producing. There's no shortage of trees to the mills. There's no shortage of anything. If the lumber looks thin in your lumber store, in your, in your big box store, it's because the mills want it that way. They want you to think that it's thin, that they can't keep up then maybe you're more willing to pay this ridiculous price. So it, it's a game. They're playing a game with you. They've inflated these prices because when they first started inflating, you just kept buying. You were willing to pay that price. Well, when's it going to stop? And when it does stop, we're all going to know. So guys, it's up to you. The lumber prices are going to come down when the consumer, me, you and everyone else says, I've had enough. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of these two videos right here, and we'll see you soon.